Hello everybody. Um, I'm going to share with you a very quick tip. You might already know this, but uh, I'm very embarrassed to say that after all the time of using Blender, I just figured this out recently. Uh, anyway, I was starting to do, um, in honor of Gareth Edwards' uh, new Godzilla movie, uh, if you don't know, there's a phenomenal Godzilla movie about to be made. I, I, based on the trailers and the previous work of this director, uh, his previous film was called Monsters, which is a very low-budget um, kaiju movie. Um, I, I don't see this one being a, a, a bomb the way that uh, Roland Emmerich's quote-unquote Godzilla was. Um, Roland Emmerich's movie was not the real Godzilla. So anyway, um, I have been a Godzilla fan ever since I was a little boy, and I just absolutely love Godzilla movies. And it got me so interested in Japanese culture to the point where when I got into college, I minored in Japanese, and I actually uh, spent four years uh, in Japan, uh, three years on the Japan Exchange Teacher Program, and a year at the Kanazawa Board of Education teaching at different schools. Uh, that's how much I got inspired by uh, kaiju movies. So, um, long story short, uh, I started uh, modeling a Godzilla here. You can see the king of all monsters, the big G himself. And I've started doing some sculpting. I can't show you the full sculpt in sculpt mode because it would drag down the computer too much. He's coming along. This is based on kind of like the uh, late 80s, I would say, the, the Heisei era. I believe it's the Heisei era. Uh, Godzilla design. <clears throat> I like the Millennium Design's uh, spines, but uh, I thought this one would... Uh, be uh, pretty good. Plus, I have a, a figure, <clears throat> like a, a foot tall figure of this character, and I figured I could easily get the details off of that one. So, I figured I would base the character off of this, and I thought, well, Godzilla needs some dudes to fight. And if you recognize this, the Mazer tank, <clears throat> then you would notice that uh, this tank shows up in a lot of uh, Godzilla films, which is a tank that. Uh, uh, has like a reflective disc, which in most cases shoots uh, uh, electricity at Godzilla. According to Godzilla vs. King Kong, Godzilla does not like uh, electricity, and uh, which was established in the very first Godzilla film. And so they tend to shoot uh, electricity at him using these tanks. And so I thought, okay, so I, I modeled this tank based on a toy, uh, pictures of a toy. And you can see here it has several wheels. Let me select all the wheels here. So let's say that I was going to animate this little dude uh, coming into screen. And I, I wanted to just go ahead and do it in the simplest way possible without any scripts or plugins or any kind of like weird constraints or something like that. Let's just say I have a very quick animation with a bunch of these tanks coming in. And I want to manually control uh, animating the wheels. Uh, the default rotation mode of everything in Blender, I believe is set to median point. So that means that if you select multiple objects, at the point between all those objects is where they rotate from. So let's go ahead and do that. Oh, that's not what we want. Uh, if we select this little guy down here, pivot point and select, for example, 3D cursor. Okay. Move this 3D cursor around, you can see the rotation icon following that 3D cursor. And uh, that's one of the reasons why Blender does left click, which is to move the 3D cursor into place. And so if I go ahead and rotate from that, that's definitely not what we want. All right, so let's go to individual origins. And then with the rotation uh, tool selected, transform manipulator, all right, we will select the rotation tool. And as you can see here, the red uh, rotation axis is lined up with the forward direction of where we want to go. So let's go ahead and rotate that. Oh, look at that. That's exactly what we would want. And what's nice is you can set the uh, time slider to the beginning point of where you want things to go. Hit I on your keyboard and key your rotations. Then move your time slider forward. Oops, and just go ahead and select individual origins, and then go ahead and select the rotation axis 
that you want to rotate on. And then you can just keep spinning this. As you can see here, I'm spinning this little 3D cursor in place. So every time I spin this around, I'm making a 3D rotation. All right. So basically, I have created a, a real rotation for every time I spun that cursor around in, in, in place like that. So it's a very cheap and easy way to get uh, some tire rotations. And obviously, you're going to get some slipping and some stride length errors if you try to do it manually uh, based on some, you know, stuff. Obviously, if you, if you went and built some sort of script or plugin or something like that, you would be able to have complete control over it. It would, it would go and control these wheels uh, based on the timing and, and the forward movement of, of the tank. But this is like a very, very quick and dirty way of, of doing it. And let me show you another place where this is useful. All right. As you can see here, I'm a fan of a great many things. So let's go ahead and select the armature here and go to stick mode so it's easier to see. Okay. So this is, um, you can't really tell too well here, but uh, this is a Protoss Zealot from the game StarCraft. So if you've ever played StarCraft, you know that the Zealot is the frontline unit of the Protoss forces. They are kind of like a warrior monk kind of guys in Kaysen's golden armor. And they have these blades on their arms. Uh, so let's go ahead and um, let's say that we want to uh, pose his hand into a fist. All right, we'll go to pose mode. All right. And we will select this. Let's say we want to pose all these fingers into a fist. And uh, if we were to select these two uh, bones in these fingers here and use the default, the median point, you can see it, it does not deform the way we would like. So let's go ahead and choose individual origins. Oh, that's really nice. You can curve the fingers. And if you have three fingers, this guy only has two bones in the, I'm, I'm sorry. The, uh, the bones, If you, this guy only has two bones in each finger, but if you have three, it would work equally well. And you just grab the um, translation, um, I'm sorry, rotation axis that you want to curl them on, and you can curl these guys back and forth. Now let's go ahead and select this thumb here, and let's see what happens. All right, ooh, that's not quite what we want. These two guys are rotating the way we would like, Let's rotate them the way, oh, nope, that's not right either. So there are limitations. So as you can see here, these guys, these uh, normal fingers here, facing out this way, are rotating on the green rotation axis. And this guy here wants to rotate on the red. So basically you're gonna have to select, rotate, and then select and rotate. Okay, but it's still much better than individually rotating everything. All right, and you can see here, let's select the arm. And because every, basically anything that's lined up in the same direction is really good to manipulate with, with this method. So as you can see here, we've selected uh, both the bicep and the forearm and everything in there is lined up on this blue axis. So if we wanted, to, for example, uh, bow his arm or do a punch maneuver. You can see here we don't have to individually rotate. If we were using the old met method, we would have to rotate this, select, and rotate that. And it's two moves instead of one. All right. And as you can see here, you can do like swings and stuff like that. And obviously, it's not for everything, but uh, it's really useful for, for example, uh, sorry. Uh, fingers and spines. You can see you can move the spine back and forth. Really nice to be able to do this this way. As long as everything is, is lined up in the same rotational ax axis, it's very nice to do it this way. All right. So you can see the effects. It's like being able, you know, instead of doing like a really complex rig, you can do these real quick and dirty, uh, I can go ahead to normal rotation mode. 
to get a different type of rotation. And so as you can see here, instead of doing, like for example, an IK move, which you could do for different reasons, uh, you can do this. Let's go ahead and move these guys. Yeah. Now this this is like a back and forth type thing because both these arms are pointing in the opposite direction. So as you can see here, <clears throat> you could do like a dance type move like that. <laughs> I know it looks kind of ridiculous. Anyway, that is the um, basic uh, look at how to use the individual origins uh, pivot point function inside of Blender. So I hope it helps you out.